Five on your side at noon. Focused on you. As we go on the air at noon, we are in storm alert, a morning full of heavy rain and much more is on the way. Flash flooding has forced the closure of several roads to our west. Here's a scene in Gasconade County where authorities say up to three inches of rain fell in just a half hour. This is nearby Gerald, Missouri, water almost reaching a house on Highway 50 at 6th Street. The fire department says water was waist deep in some areas, but it quickly receded an hour later. Back here in the metro, this is Interstate 64 in St. Louis. Rain forcing people to slow down. The heavy rain caused some backups for commuters during the morning rush hour. Conditions were tough on truck drivers. Take a look at this. A semi continues to block Interstate 55 after over turning during the height of the storm. All lanes still close. This is at Highway Z in Peavley. We have no reports of any injuries. The Highway Patrol says the interstate will remain closed until further notice. Thanks for being here at noon. I'm Kay Quinn. The crash is one of two major incidents involving trucks on the road this morning. Five on your side's Justina Coronel is live at the scene of another crash. This one in South St. Louis County. She's at Interstate 255 near Telegraph Road. Justina, what's going on? Yeah, okay, so this crash happened before 7 a.m. and just 40 minutes ago, that scene was cleared just right over my shoulder here. Police were blocking that tractor trailer, which was on the side of the road. Now that tractor trailer rolled over and landed on its side on eastbound Interstate 255 off of the Limburg exit. The traffic was restricted to one lane as emergency crews try to clear the crash. Now I did reach out to Missouri State Highway Patrol, but they weren't able to confirm what caused this crash just yet. And it's unclear if anyone was hurt. Just an hour ago, I spoke to the executive director of the Illinois Trucking Association. The nonprofit trade association said truck drivers are constantly going through the by state. When it comes to rain, his biggest concern are truck drivers needing to slow down. If those drivers are maneuvering 80,000 pounds, it could take up to two football fields to break efficiently. I give plenty of space uh, to get in front of that truck. Um, if you're uh, if you're changing lanes to get back in front of a truck that you've passed, make sure that you've given plenty of room uh, for that driver and give plenty of space for him because uh, you may see something in the road that where you need to slam on the brakes. Um, that truck driver needs more space uh, to, to slow down his vehicle than your car needs. He's asking drivers to be mindful when you're driving around these trucks and tractor trailers. The biggest advice he has for all drivers is to slow down. Reporting live, Justina Cornell, five on your side. So let's check out current conditions. Here's a live look at Arnold. Rainy, gray, much cooler today, and the threat of flooding isn't over. This is the first of two rounds of heavy rain. Meteorologist Tracy Hinson is here with the Weather First forecast. Round two tomorrow morning, Tracy? Yes, it's going to come in later on tonight with the potential for some severe weather, and then we're going to have to worry about that flash flood risk into the early morning hours. So on our radar view, this is the 12-hour loop. It shows this system coming in a lot of energy, a lot of power with it. As you can see, many lightning strikes in the area. It probably woke you up last night and then very heavy rainfall that was pretty localized. So with this right now, things are much quieter. It's just sort of a scattered rainfall. This is a 15 minute loop here just to show you that overall direction pretty much moving westerly with a slight southwest uh, uh, tinge to that. But for the most part, just very light rainfall. We're not looking at any areas of heavy rainfall. These are our radar rain estimates. So this gives us a good idea of what we saw, what we encountered overnight last night and into that hardest hit area there right along uh, 50 into Lynn and Gerald some spots reaching up to five inches of rainfall and even a pocket there sort of south of Morrison that's indicating closer to six to seven inches of rainfall pulling this view back out here we are under flood watches through the overnight hours and into tomorrow for most of our metropolitan counties here and this is due to that heavier rainfall that is set to arrive. Now some areas did see some significant storm reports here. I just want to point out this one that was in the Gerald area. It just goes to show you how dangerous flash flooding can be. Water was over the roads and three cars were stalled in flood water. So just be careful and I know sometimes it's hard to see. So if you can wait tomorrow until those flood waters recede, you'll be in better shape. All right. Thank you, Tracy. We'll see you in a few minutes with the full forecast. We're going to be staying on top of the weather all day long and into tomorrow. You can get your weather first forecast sent straight to your phone. Just text the word weather to 314-425-5355.
It may be up to two years before we know exactly what caused that Greyhound bus crash on Interstate 70 near Highland. That's the conclusion of our preliminary report just released by the National Transportation Safety Board. Three people died when the bus slammed into three semi-trucks that were parked on the side of the highway. The bus was traveling from Indianapolis to St. Louis on the morning of July 12th. The NTSB says the investigation is ongoing and could take up to two years to complete. Two survivors on the bus are suing Greyhound. A person is dead after being hit by a car in North St. Louis. Police were called to the crash scene on Natural Bridge near Arlington overnight. They say weather doesn't appear to have played a role in the accident. The driver of the vehicle stayed on scene and is said to be cooperating. Missouri uh, Governor Mike Parson responding to a lawmaker's call for a special session on nuclear waste in the St. Louis area. He says he has no plans to call one. The request comes from House Minority Leader Crystal Quaid and follows a report that federal agencies downplayed nuclear waste in St. Louis and St. Charles counties. Well, Governor Parsons' offices issued a statement saying, although he's concerned about the impacted communities, the issue was caused by the federal government and should be fixed by the federal government. I'm Robert Townsend. Johnny Johnson was executed on Tuesday for murdering six-year-old Casey Williamson. 21 years ago in the summer of 2002, this case gripped the hearts of many in the St. Louis area and made national headlines when Williamson disappeared from her home in Valley Park. You'll remember dozens of volunteers and police searched for the missing child. Casey's body was later found in a pit inside an abandoned glass factory less than a mile from her home. Prosecutors say Johnny Johnson confessed to beating the child to death with bricks and rocks after he tried to sexually assault her. Again, he was executed on Tuesday. You can find out more details right now on KSDK.com. Donald Trump facing more criminal charges today. His reaction to the latest indictment against him. And singer Lizzo is trending today, but for all the wrong reasons. What former dancers claim she did that prompted a lawsuit?